In this video, we will be talking about one of the pond's top predators, the great diving beetle. And it's even more predatory larva, sometimes called the water tiger. The six species of great diving beetle in the genus Dytiscus are the largest of the nearly 120 diving beetle species found in the UK, and among the biggest of the freshwater insects, with only the great silver water beetle being bigger in terms of mass. The great diving beetle, Dytiscus marginalis, is the most common and widespread species, and the adult grows up to 32 mm long. Despite spending nearly all their lives underwater, they breathe air, and will regularly come up to the surface to replenish their air supply. They do this by sticking the end of their abdomen through the water's surface, slightly lifting their elytra or wing cases to expose their two largest and only working spiracles to the air. At the same time, air is pumped into a space under the elytra and stored in hairs on the abdomen. This acts as a supply of air while they're underwater, just like the air tank scuba divers use. Their bodies are streamlined and hydrodynamic, a flattened teardrop shape from the side, which enables them to move through the water at speed. They swim using their rear pair of legs, which have a fringe of hairs, creating a flattened paddle-like shape, which they use in sync like a pair of oars. This method of swimming has been found to be 39% more efficient than using all six legs, as many other water beetles do. The mouths of great diving beetles have relatively smooth elytra, but in most cases, there are grooves in the female's elytra, although in some cases the females can have smooth elytra like the males. A more reliable way is to look for the presence of sucker pads on the front pair of legs, which are only present in the males and absent in the females. These sucker pads have one large sucker, one slightly smaller one, and tens of smaller suckers too, and he uses this to hang on to the female when mating. As I mentioned at the start of the video, they are at or near the top of the food chain in many ponds, and will eat a great variety of prey, including water lice, tadpoles and snails, and even adult newts. They eat this prey by using a powerful pair of mandibles to chew through their food. But if anything, the larvae are even more predatory. They hatch from eggs that are laid into the stems of aquatic plants by the female. They start off small, but after molting three times, they can reach lengths of up to five or six centimetres, making them longer than the adults. Like the adult, they are positively buoyant, so need to hang on to something to prevent themselves from floating to the surface. But, like the adults, they breathe air. When they need to replenish their supply, it means they can reach the surface with little effort. They breathe using two spiracles at the end of their abdomen, which are surrounded by hydrophobic or water-repellent hairs, that break the surface tension, giving them access to the air above. They can swim well using all six legs, which are lined with stiff bristles, that they can use like paddles to move through the water. However, when they are alarmed, they can move more rapidly by flexing their whole body. They feed on a wide variety of prey. In fact, they will try to eat pretty much anything that moves. They can sense prey by smell and will strike out at any movement of what they think may be prey. Tadpoles, insect larvae and water fleas are just some of the many creatures they will eat. But sometimes they capture prey they just can't handle, like this small diving beetle that's probably too small, too smooth and too hard to hold on to. The prey is caught using a pair of pincer-like mandibles, which are hinged at the base. When they are hunting, they typically sit and wait for prey to come close enough, striking when triggered by their prey's movement. But the strikes are not always that accurate, or at actual prey. There are a pair of tubes in each of these pincers, and once prey is captured, they inject digestive fluids into the body using one pair of these tubes. Once grabbed, they'll often shake the prey, and it has been suggested this may help distribute the digestive fluids through the prey's body. Once this fluid has taken effect, they then use the other pair of tubes like straws, sucking up the liquefied and part digestive parts of the prey. If you look closely at this footage, you can see this liquefied prey being pumped through the head and into the gut of this larva. They are so insatiable that when I catch one, I quickly separate it from the other species. If you were to leave one in a pond tray or aquarium full of other pond inhabitants, they will likely all be gone in an hour or two. Even the other great diving beetle larva, and sometimes the adults, are not safe. This ferociousness has led to its name, the water tiger. As I'm sure you'll agree after seeing all that, they are absolutely amazing creatures, but are probably the species that makes me most grateful I'm not a small tadpole swimming around in a pond with these beasties in it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for some more pond life videos, and why not check out this one while you're here. Bye for now.